Um, I just I want to thank you guys for for um, covering our team all season long. We are super proud of uh, the season that we had, um, and obviously we look forward to the future. Um, and over the past, I don't know, two weeks or so, um, there there had been a lot of movement in our in our program, uh, movement in which um, I didn't welcome, but that's the way it is. Um, and I can only I'm only going to speak. You know, this one time on the players that decided to transfer out, because I don't know the reasons why. You're going to have to find your why out from those who decided to, to move on from our program. Um, I will tell you that, that I, I wish them well. I want them to have find their, their, their happiness, find their bliss. Um, if I can help them anyway, like I extended that to them, I surely will. Um, we did have an addition. We had one of them, you know, change their mind about um, leaving our program. So Kiki Harrigan is is in the fold. I know some people broke the story. Some, you know, some knew more than others. But I found out yesterday, and um, you know, Kiki and I and our family had a really, really great discussion on how we move forward and how we got to the place where she wanted to transfer. So the conversation was great. Um, and our program is, is healthy, contrary to what some people may believe, it's, it's healthy. It's in a place where we're thriving, is a place where, you know, everybody's, everybody that continues to be a Gamecock, their dreams will come true. Um, so I look forward to um, our team next year, whoever, whoever that's comprised of. Questions for Coach Daly? David? Don with the, uh, the the Kiki reversal, uh, just what went into that conversation between you two, and uh, was it like <coughs> Bianca's situation last year? Uh, no, no, it was it was quite different. And let me just follow up. Last Tuesday is when I had my postseason meetings with players, and that's when I found out about all four, whether all four of them decided to do it um, that Tuesday or Wednesday. That was on them. Um, so I was notified on, on Tuesday. Um, and then, you know, I had to go out of town for a number of things, Final Four, and then I had to go out of town uh, for some other stuff that I had to do. And then um, I got with Kiki sometime this weekend just to, just to open up conversation with her um, and her family and her support system. And then um, we finally got a chance to get everybody, you know, on the phone yesterday. questions? Greg? Yeah, Coach, just going off of that, <clears throat> have you had any other conversations with any of the other players about maybe coming back? No, no. Yeah, our, our roster will be, our roster will be as it is unless we get a transfer in. So we, you know, we, we won't revisit with any other player that decided to leave. Um, we're going to move forward with uh, the people who really express that they want to be Gamecocks. Matt. Coach, obviously there's a lot of hype coming in with this recruiting class. How do you talk to those players about dealing with the pressure and expectation when they do get here? Um, I mean, a lot of it is, has been done just doing the, re the recruiting process. Um, there is a, you know, a pretty big following um, by, by you guys as well as our fans and um, it's a, that's probably some of the things that attracted the players that are coming in is that, you know, we're, they'll be a, a big fish in a small pond. Um, and they welcome that, that challenge. Um, but until you're able to get here and experience it, you don't really know. So a lot of it has to do with conversations, uh, media training, um, just uh, the, the other players that are here that have experienced it. Um, you don't really understand it until you're you're thrown into the fire, uh, but they're you know they're they're good individuals. They got you know they are of great character. Um, I think they've, in their own right, have followings, press followings, fan followings, you know, social media followings. So they, I think they kind of understand what what they're coming into. Yeah, Don, going off of that, not to talk about any of the specific players who are leaving, but do you think maybe, you know, because you have such a great recruiting class coming in, maybe, you know, some of them just said, well, maybe it's time to move on because uh, they looked at maybe some of the potential minutes next year? 
I mean, I, I have no idea. I, I don't know, you know. I, I know the only person I can speak on is Kiki, and that never came up in our conversations. David? Don with Kiki, how has y'all's relationship been for, for the past three years? I mean, you mentioned like with Bianca that she was kind of your kryptonite. Uh -huh. uh, what is it? What would the word be to describe your relationship with Kiki? Well, heck, I thought it was pretty good up until last Tuesday. <laughs> um, but I think here's with Kiki. You know, Kiki, um, who is probably best friends with Bianca, um, so they probably haven't had favorable conversations in their dorm room about me. Um, but I think when you sit down and actually talk to a young person and you figure out, you know, what it is that um, bothers them, what it is that moves them, what it is that they aspire to become, I think the conversations are a lot better. When you're having to, um, when you when you're having to hear from other people other than the source, and I'm 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 our team's biggest source. I'm the one that really can have the biggest impact in their life. Um, but also am a truth teller. And I just, you know, it's not always something that they want to hear. Um, but also, you know, through this process, you know, learn that, I, you know, I have to sit down and let's just give them a voice and let them talk and let them, you know, figure out what they want in life. And we work, we put a plan together and we work towards that. Um, we, we talk about that during the recruiting process. When, it, when you get here with all the different, you know, dynamics of a team and, you know, that, that may change throughout a, a career of a young person. And, and we have to continue to revisit that so we can assure players that, you know, they're on the, on the right road to becoming who they, they want to become. Ben. Is this sort of transfer churn, I guess I'd call it, or shifts happening, is this just now kind of a fact of life in college basketball f for you guys? And, and and do you have any sense of maybe why that is? Um, it is. I mean, it is something that it's a – it's the the, re, the, um, the portal is a recruiting tool. I mean, it's, it's modern-day college free agency. Um, so, I mean, it's something that we have to check, you know, every day. Uh, to make sure there aren't people in there that can that can help our basketball team, um, and you know as you can see, it it is a valuable tool. You know I think players are uh, are utilizing it a lot more these days. And how do you fix it? I don't know. I don't know if you know. I think the players have an opportunity to um, to go to a place where they can they can test the market, um, and if that makes them happy. Great. If it doesn't, great. Um, you know, but for any coach out there in the country, they they want players who want to be in the fold. They want to. They want players who are fully committed to um, the process, because uh, everything is a everything is a process. You know, and, and throughout your process, nothing's going to be perfectly, you know, perfectly mapped out, and nothing. You know, what makes us stronger um, is being uncomfortable. Growth takes place when you're uncomfortable. And if you're not willing to go through that uncomfort being uncomfortable, you know, I, I just don't think you're gonna be very successful in life. That's just I don't know if that's old school, I don't know if that's you know, I mean those those are lessons that my mom taught me a, a long, long time ago. Greg. Coach, you mentioned the possibility of adding a transfer. Is there a particular area you'd like to address with that maybe? Or is it just whoever's available? Well, whoever whoever can help our team, you know, um, and there's a there's a lot out there, but we're selective in, in who we're going after um, because we do have a, you know, we got a pretty good group coming in, um, and people have to understand that, and you know, it's not like I don't lay it out, you know, I don't lay out our depth chart, I don't lay out, you know, how how we see our players in the future, and I I do that periodically throughout their careers. Um, some may like it, some may not like it, but you know I try to paint a picture that's that's realistic, you know, in in how individually things play out and how I think overall it it it, it shapes our team. So you know we're, we're you know, obviously guard play is, is something that um, we lost and we gotta we gotta somehow fill a a, a, a void, just a fill a void that that we need. Um, so we'll see how that plays out in the next few weeks. In the back here, Matt. 
Coach, you fought so hard for Taya during her transfer from Tennessee to get playing time. How frustrating is it for you to see her go after everything you did to get her on the court? Now, I'm, I'm really not going to speak on Taya or Ladeja or Bianca Jackson. Um, they are they they are they are somebody else's uh, players, um, whether they pick the team or not yet. Um, so I'm just going to keep it moving. David. Uh, following up on a couple of questions, go down. If you were to add somebody from the portal, would it be somebody that you hope would play right away and and not have to sit out a year? Um. Yes. Obviously, we want health. We want healthy bodies. We want bodies in which that that can you know, help us um, check off some of the the goals that we'll have as a team. Um, so, not really looking for a you know a transfer that has to sit out. And also with the five recruits, uh, do you have a date when all of them will uh, are set to be on campus after graduation and all? Um, I don't because you know some of them will play USA basketball. You know some of them will you know some of them will be here. You know maybe in the first session, some of them second session, some of them may not even be here at all just because of you know maybe their their opportunities to play USA basketball. So you know it's it's fluid. But you do expect all of them at some point. Oh, absolutely. In the back to Mike. Don, going back to Temple last week and, you know, talking about your mom, you got really emotional, obviously. Yeah. It's got to be kind of hard going back, you know, sometimes to, to the to the hometown. But what was that moment like for you, you know, just to be back there and be honored by Temple? Um, I mean, Temple holds a special place in my heart, obviously. Um, and then, you know, the the whole emotional thing, um, I mean that that just caught me off guard. Seriously, I don't I don't really have those moments. I do a really good job of just you know keeping my composure. Um, but you know when you're when you're mourning, you know a person that has been incredible in your life, and still the the memories that she leaves with uh, myself and my entire family, you know are near and dear. Um, I, I always I always say that mom is was was a practical joker, and she I know she was smiling down on that moment. She made that moment happen, um, so I'm glad I'm able to give her a laugh, um, you know, while she's up there. Having... Great, coach. Just what's the status of Letitia's knee, and do you expect her to be fully healthy in time for the start of next season? Yeah, we expect Letitia to be fully healthy. Well, she's she's way ahead of schedule, um, and she's chopping at the bid to to get back out there on the floor, um, but only, you know, only our medical staff will give her, you know, the, the okay to do that. But we're, we got time, so we're taking it really slow. In the back Coach, we've seen Kiki's, uh, put, you know, how good she can be. How much better can she get in her senior year? Um, I, you know, I, I anticipate Kiki to, to have a, an incredible season. Um, in that, I think she's, you know, I think she's one of the best players in our conference. Um, on both sides of the ball, um, there, there's room for her to grow. Obviously, I think her her handle has to get better going both ways. Uh, she's very strong going right. You know, we got to work that left hand um, in order for her to balance out what she's doing from the from um, driving right. I mean, her mid range is great. Her her three ball is is pretty consistent when she shoots it. Um, defensively, I just think she needs to work a little bit harder. Um, not just getting blocked shots because that's a form of defense, um, but it's not the total package when it comes to defending. Um, so we, we, we have to bump her up in those areas and, and get her ready you know, to be drafted in the WNBA draft next year. Ben. Um, when you were kind of talking about the transfers, you mentioned you know it's a process and, and things aren't mapped mm -hmm. out. Is there maybe a sense that, that kids and maybe people around kids are, are more almost mapping things out, just looking ahead trying to project things rather than saying, I'm here, I'll fight for minutes. They're saying, well, well, this person's coming in and this, you know, I didn't get minutes last year. A and almost projecting it out and then making decisions based on that rather than sort of letting it kind of come to them almost? Um, I, I really don't know the, the thought process and you know, how players come to that conclusion of, of transferring. Um, I, I can speak on um, Kiki. And, you know, Kiki has a great support system. I don't think her support system wanted her to leave. You know, I thought in, in, in our discussions, um, you know, Kiki wanted, wanted to revisit, you know, how I saw her in our program. And, you know, when you, when you don't know, 
um, you tend to think that you tend to think the worst. Like you know, I'm not cared for. I don't not need it, and um, and that's furthest from the truth. I think you know with maturity and growing up and and understanding your your worth. Um, some players need to hear it. They need to verbalize. They need to verbalize to them to make them feel a lot more comfortable. Kiki was one of those players in which they need to hear it. Um, um, she's a, you know, she's a tough player. You you think she's tough minded. You see, but they're, you know, she's 21 years old, and, and sometimes 21 year olds need to hear it in order for them to feel a certain comfort level. That that's on me. I, I should have done a better job and not. You know, allowing that space in which, you know, she could think negative thoughts and then, you know, give it to her support system. So we're going to do a better job at just um, communicating a lot better. David. Don, looking at last year as a whole, um, with Alexis and Bianca kind of injured at the beginning, mm -hmm. how much do you think that affected the season going forward since you, you didn't really have that, that set starting five because those two who would have played a lot of minutes mm -hmm. were, were kind of banged up? Um, I, I think it had it played a, a role in us having some continuity, some experience. Um, so we had to, you know, we had to wait until they they got healthy and just kind of piece together how we approach the season. Um, that's, you know, that that is what caused us having to play fast and play through our guards very early on. Which, um, looking back on it, I really liked. It's something that we're going to continue to do while, you know, adding in. You know, some some post play, some much needed post play um, from you know the returners as well as the newcomers that are coming in. So, it it played it played a role, a role in which we didn't want to want it to be a crutch, and it's not something that we wanted to lean on um, or or talk about a lot. One, just from scouting purposes. Two, is that you know we had able bodies that were able to get up and go and help us um, try to win some basketball games. Any other questions for Coach? Sure. One more, David. And also, Don, with the schedule, is that starting to be pieced together? I, I saw that Maryland put out something that you guys will play. Um, are the standbys like UConn and? Uh, we don't. We don't have the. We don't have the paperwork for Maryland. They did put it out, but we don't have any signed contracts. So, um, that that caught us by surprise a little bit. Are there any other games that you know of right now outside of Clemson or maybe UConn or I don't know SEC Big Twelve? Mmm. -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the, the ones that we played this year are pr more than likely are the ones that we're going to play next year. We are going to play in the, um, the Virgin Islands tournament. Um, and, and we do have that paperwork, right? <laughs> um, so, yes, we will, we'll do that over the Thanksgiving break. Um, other than that, I think we need about two games. Two games. And those two games, we want to play somebody with a, a, a RPI of a 150 or better. State, will that still be? Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. Thank you.